is the right step for the students to step up against this because we are a part of this community. Like this campus is made up made of us. You know, without the students here, what the, what would be the university? You know. Students are raising concerns about discrimination in Greek life after SU expelled Theta Tau over videos containing homophobic, sexist, and racist remarks. The videos have sparked outrage across the nation, and now students are calling on the university to implement concrete changes and work towards a more inclusive campus community. Good morning, I'm Zach Staten, and thanks for joining us for Mornings on the Hill. And I'm Christine Morton. It's been a week since Chancellor Severud emailed students announcing the suspension of SU's chapter of Theta Tau because of two controversial videos. Over the weekend, the fraternity was permanently expelled, but protests on campus are continuing, and that's our top story. So far, 18 students have been cited for student conduct violations. Right now, those students could face suspension or expulsion. While the investigation continues, students and university leaders have been hosting discussions over the larger issue of discrimination on campus. Our Caitlin Pearson joins us live outside the Theta Tau House on Harrison Avenue. Good morning, guys. As you can see, the Theta Tau House is right behind me. But what you not, may not be able to see is that the letters have been taken off of the house. Now, this will be one of the many things that will be discussed in tonight's town hall meeting that will take place in Hendricks Chapel at 7 p.m. The Board of Trustees, as well as, as well as the Chancellor, will be in attendance at the meeting. So now throughout the week, I've had the opportunity to talk to students about the events that occurred this week and what they can expect to happen moving forward. When news of the Theta Tau video broke on campus around noon on Wednesday, containing content described by the Chancellor as, quote, extremely racist, anti-Semitic, homophobic, sexist, and hostile to people with disabilities, student emotions ran high. To be honest, I wasn't totally surprised that something like this happened, especially with, you know, phones being so prevalent. Um, I've always come into the university understanding that not everyone's going to have the best idea about you. So when something like this surfaced through fraternity, it was kind of like, well, now we have evidence that this kind of thing happens. This lack of surprise was echoed throughout the campus. It was shocking to know that this was made public today to the whole campus. Um, but at the same time, like, I feel like this, this kind of like attitude, this kind of like these feelings, that they are present on this campus. When the video was not originally released by the university, students voiced their disapproval. I was curious to see what the video was exactly, and I was a bit disappointed that we weren't um, provided the video um, once uh, Chancellor Kent had sent out the uh, email regarding the events. Protests then took place in front of the Chancellor's house, where the student protesters then marched to Hendricks, where hours of student testimonials took place. I've never really felt like I was in a situation where I felt empowered and where I felt like I had a lot of support. Um, and so when all of these things are, you know, starting and everything, it's, it's really empowering. The Recognize Us movement that was born from this says staying informed is the most important thing one can do throughout this process of change. Staying informed is the most important part. It's great if you have time to go out and protest. It's great if you know you can interview, interview people. But if you're not aware of every, inf every piece of information that's coming out, something you say could be taken the wrong way. Raising their signs and their voices to make a difference. The Recognize Us movement has been on the quad all throughout this week, gathering as many grievances and plans of action from students before tonight's town hall meeting. That again will be in Hendricks Chapel at 7 p.m. We'll have much more on this Theta Tau story throughout this hour, so stay tuned for that. I'm Caitlin Pearson for Mornings on the Hill. Caitlin, thank you so much. We'll have much more on the Theta Tau story in just a moment. But first, it's time to check the weather. And students have come out of their hibernation, Christine, this week. They're sitting outside on the quad enjoying the nice weather. It's finally sunny again. That is right, Zach. It's beautiful. But will those sunny days last? Odea Pincus is live out on University Ave to tell us what to expect. Odea? Thanks, guys. You know, they say two steps forward and one step back. That's kind of what we're looking at today. We had two beautiful days. Today, it's a little bit more gloomy out, and I am left with a sunburn. So let's take a look at your five-day forecast. 
on Wednesday today. We've got a 90% chance of rain, so you might want to get out your raincoat. It is a high of 51 degrees. Tomorrow, only a 70% chance of rain, a little bit down from today, but it's going to be a little bit cooler out. 49 degrees is the high, 36 is the low. And on Friday, it's Mayfest, so we are hoping for nice weather here, but 40% chance of rain, so you might want to wear jeans and maybe a pair of boots in case it gets a little bit muddy out there on the grass. It's going to be a high of 66, though, so we're hoping for warm weather. On Saturday, 60% chance of rain, 49 is the high. But on Sunday, we're going to be back to sunny skies, maybe a little bit of clouds, but only 20% chance of rain and a high of 47. So we're looking forward to some nicer weather this weekend. Back to you guys, Zach and Christine. Thank you so much, Odea. We'll have more on that in our 1030. Back to our Theta Tau coverage. The chapter is the most recent fraternity to face university penalties, but it's not the only one this year. That's right, Zach. There have been a total of four suspensions this school year, three of which were incidents involving hazing allegations. Delta Tau Delta was suspended in the fall of 2017. Alpha Epsilon Pi was suspended in February. And a week before Theta Tau was suspended, it was Sigma Alpha Mu. Now, in light of the Theta Tau expulsion, the Student Association is calling on the university to conduct an audit for all Greek chapters on campus. SA President James Franco and Vice President Angie Patty say they want to audit the to include all social, professional, and multicultural organizations. Now, Brandon Munford, who is a brother of the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, incorporated a multicultural fraternity, believes that his organization has nothing to worry about. Um, I believe that, you know, if you have nothing to hide, you shouldn't worry about the audit. I think some organizations on campus probably need it more than others. Um, and I feel that, you know, just given the situation that there's probably other orgs that need to, like, just, you know, figure out, like, what's going on with them and, like, how they're going about, you know, with their new members and everything like that. University says the purpose of the audit is not to eliminate Greek life, but to instead discover what can be improved. And right now the audits are scheduled to begin this summer. However, SA is pushing for the review to begin as soon as possible. We have more coverage of this story coming up in this half hour. First year and transfer students were off campus and out in the Syracuse community this past weekend to give back. Our Nicole Dementry is live in studio with more. Nicole? That's right, Christine and Zach. RNC Service Organization was established in 2004 as a selective organization charged with picking the future student leaders here at SU. And each class is tasked with planning and executing the largest service day here on campus. Take a watch. Saturdays on the quad are usually quiet here at SU, but not on this particular Saturday. Every April, the RMCs, a group of first year and transfer students, organize the biggest day of community service for students by students. This year marks the 14th event. You're to learn that you're going to put on this event for the whole campus, the big event, like the largest student day out of service. Just as freshmen organizing it, um, it was really, I guess it was a daunting task, definitely. The 23 person seat class started planning for the day back in September through team building exercises, Saturday service work, and fundraisers. For this big event, this year's theme What's your why? And for Reed, it means So, what's your why? We're sort of encouraging students to more think about not what they do, but why they do it. And for fellow seed, Divya Patnick To get off of a secluded campus and just gain perspective and help others while doing it. Hendricks Chapel Dean Brian Conkle charged volunteers and also shared his why. My why is that ultimately we need each other to become ourselves. Then it was off to the 14 service sites around Syracuse, where the students did everything from cleaning up trash to painting rooms. As students at Syracuse University, that we remember that our community also includes the city. You know, none of us would be here without um, that community. We are first year students. We're just starting here. We're not, and we haven't really grown our roots yet. We're just starting yeah. here. Now, Saisha Bird um, is also an alum and SU professor, and she's also a Syracuse native, and she shared her journey and how she reached out to the community and to other volunteers at this event. So reporting live in studio, I'm Nicole Dementry from Mornings on the Hill. 
All right, Nicole, thank you so much. Coming up here on Mornings on the Hill after the break, commencement is just two and a half weeks away and the student speaker has been selected. We'll tell you who has received that honor. Also coming up, our Alexis Scott has more on how some SU students are helping a local eco-friendly salon build up its business. Stay with us for those stories and much more here on Mornings on the Hill. Welcome back to Mornings on the Hill. Graduation is about two weeks away and the university has selected its student commencement speaker. Mornings on the Hill is very excited to announce that Jacqueline Page, a television, radio and film major here at Newhouse, will be addressing her fellow graduates at this year's ceremony. Page is an active member of the ROTC. She's also one of this year's 12 university scholars, the highest honor an SU student can receive. Page revealed the one major theme in her speech we will hear about on graduation day. When I wrote the speech, one of the things I really harped on and focused on was my time abroad and um, being able to explore what it means to be me and what it means to learn and grow as in this early stage. Paige says she plans to focus on the theme of time and make her speech relatable for all in the Carrier Dome on May 13th. Back to the Theta Tau story now, the Newhouse School yesterday held a discussion with students to talk about their reaction and concerns. Led by uh, Dean Lorianne Brenham yeah, and a panel of professors, to. the discussion addressed topics including racism, sexism, and the use of satire. At times, the conversation was emotional. One Newhouse student questioned the school's use of Louis C.K.'s face on promotional posters for an event that documented the exposure of his sexual misconduct. Why did we not celebrate the women in these advertisements? Instead, a possibly triggering photo of a sexual assailant was provided and shared through email and around the campus. The discussion lasted one hour, but the panel encouraged students to continue to reach out to faculty and staff with their questions and concerns. At the accepted students' reception late last week, some Syracuse students protested the Theta Tau videos and the university's initial response to them. Emotions ran high in the Shine Student Center when, according to a witness, a university administrator told students with the newly formed Recognize Us group they should, quote, speak less passionately. This angered the students, and the exchange was caught on video and widely shared on Twitter. Yes. No! Yes. No longer will I be called because I pay just as much as those and Theta Tau boys do to sit here. I am paying to be oppressed yes. right now. Do you know how angry that makes me feel? Yes, I, I am paying yes, to be right. oppressed right. by this no, university, by that man who's name I can't even pronounce. Right. I read that right. through. Why are you telling us to hold that conversation? Yes. Tell him to do something. Tell him to listen to these demands and do something. Yes. Now, as of this morning, the video has gained lots of traction on Twitter with dozens of retweets and likes. Have you ever heard of a friendly environment for a salon? Well, we have one right here in Syracuse, Christine. Our own Alexis Scott is live in the newsroom to talk about the new salon, Amare, and how students are build up its clientele. That's right, Zach and Christine. Salon Amare is an all-sustainable salon that works to create a safer environment while also giving women a full-service salon. How does that involve Syracuse University students? Well, the salon owners reached out to a Newhouse student public relations agency and haven't looked back since. Real Communications is a member student-run public relations agency promising high-quality work and commitment. We work with a lot of real clients from all over the country. Some of them are local and some of them can be all the way across in California. This semester, they're working with Salon Amare, a sustainable beauty salon that sits right in the heart of downtown Syracuse, selling only eco-friendly products. To be able to work with a local business and understand those challenges that a new business can face, I think is really valuable especially going into the real world post-grad when everything's a real business. They dived right in, focused on how Amari was promoted to the public. We created a Facebook and an Instagram account for the salon because they didn't have any presence on social media. Drum up publicity for the salon, Hill Communications members enlisted some Syracuse sororities. On Instagram we did a, a three day long contest and it was who, whichever sorority gets the most likes and comments on their designated picture 
won a contest for $15 blowouts for their entire chapter. And the professional public relations lesson here? How to then turn a competition and that social media engagement into actual dollars for the brand. The Hill members plan to continue helping the salon with future campaigns. Jenna says there are more important takeaways for the students. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> Understanding how to do that and have fun at the same time while getting this really valuable professional experience. The salon's motto is to love your life, love the earth, and love your hair. They credit most of their success to Hill Communications and thanks the students for their services. Reporting live in the newsroom, I'm Alexa Scott for Mornings on the Hill. Continuing our coverage of the Theta Tau story, many students who are members of some of the groups targeted in the videos have been speaking out, Christine. Our Gianna Estorito is live in studio this morning with an SU student who wrote an article for Teen Vogue describing his experiences as a gay student here on campus. Gianna? That's right, I'm joined this morning by Matt Gehring, who's been whose article has been widely read and shared. He's also recognized He's a recognized name at SU for his activism on Twitter, and Matt wrote about the fear he experienced when walking past fraternity houses and the stigma that surrounded Greek life. And Matt, can you just tell me how that experience was for you, you know, writing that article? Did you um, start when the news broke, or did you give it some time before you started? That first Wednesday when the Daily Orange released that initial video was, was a really rough day for a lot of us here on this campus. Um, and for me, uh, I was lucky to be surrounded by a lot of friends that day. Um, and, and we were all discussing these videos and the things happening. Um, and it led me to, to writing about my experiences on Facebook. Um, and then the following day, uh, through, through one of my um, connections with Teen Vogue, um, I was asked to write the op-ed. And, uh, and that's how it all came together. Yeah, I was about to say, Teen Vogue is a huge, a huge publication that is widely known. Like, the connections there were you like super humbled or was it something that you had to think about before you were going to write you know for such a big publication honestly um i, I did question whether i was going to, to write that in the first place i kind of questioned whether i was the right person to be doing that um there are so many people on this campus who are doing really major things around this um like the recognize us group here on campus um so i wasn't sure if i was the right person to do it but but we're all affected by um, these events in different ways so i was just trying to share my singular perspective okay and Basically, you said you hadn't experienced any har harassment or violence yourself, but you know that it happens from communication on campus. Did you collaborate with anybody else on campus about um, the issue before you wrote the article? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, a lot of what I wrote about was inspired by the conversations that I had with friends that day and, and from things prior. Um, when I posted that original uh, Facebook post about my own experiences, I got a number of comments and, and texts and messages um, of people sharing their own experiences on campus that I was able to use to, to make a little bit of a broader claim in the Teen Vogue op-ed. Great, thank you. And unfortunately, that's all we have time for today, but the article came out great. I'm sure it impacted the community a whole lot. Um, I'm Gianna Astorito, back to, the, back to you guys in the studio. St still to come here on Mornings on the Hill. We introduce you to an SU softball player who broke a school record. Stay with us, that story and more just ahead. Welcome back. Now, Sammy Fernandez, Christine, committed to Syracuse softball during her sophomore year of high school very early. Now she's coming to the end of her senior year, and our Epiphany Catling joins us live in studio with that story. Thanks, Zach and Christine. Sammy Fernandez was picked to play on an all-star softball squad against Team USA her freshman year. And that was not the end of her college accomplishments. Sammy Fernandez's college softball career is coming to an end. But that didn't stop her from accomplishing a new milestone. Sammy broke Syracuse's all-time base hits record. Once I tied it, it kind of had a little less pressure on me and like a weight lifted off my shoulders because um, like I did know it was coming close. Like once I got, I think, about 10 hits close to the record. Sammy says breaking the record was a cool achievement for her. When I broke it against Sienna uh, with a single to the infield. Um, it just felt kind of like a relief. Sammy is a well-rounded college athlete, and softball is not the only thing she's passionate about. She's a representative for the Student Athlete Advisory Committee at SU. Only two athletes are selected from each sport. So we just kind of go to meetings, um, kind of organize community service events, and it's just a good way to like stay involved in athletics and outside in the community. Some of the community service includes making hospital visits. 
Last year, I think me, Alicia, and Hannah on my team, um, we went and we played bingo with some veterans um, at the Veterans Hospital. Um, so that was a cool event we did. Aside from this, Sammy took on a new role six months ago. I'm an aunt now, so I'm kind of obsessed with my little baby niece. She looks forward to getting pictures of Sophie. I spend tons of money on getting her little Syracuse onesies and stuff, so I would say she's probably just pretty important. From breaking a record to becoming an aunt for the first time, Sammy has had a great season and hopes to end on a high note. Reporting live in studio, I'm Epiphany Catling for Mornings on the Hill. All right, Epiphany, thank you so much. Our 1030 hosts join us now in Jose Cuevas and Billy Owens. And finally, this half hour, we probably don't give it too much thought, but we have access to a lot of information through public documents. Utica College Assistant Professor Brett Orchowski wrote the book titled Foil, The Law in the Future of Public Information in New York and spoke here at Newhouse recently. Orchowski says when filing a public information request, be specific and include dates, times, and write exactly what you are looking for. We want to see uh, or want the police report for everything that happened at that address over the last 10 years. That's public information. <laughs> That will do it for us here on Mornings on the Hill. I'm Zach Staten. Thanks for and watching. And I'm Christine Rotation. Morton. Good morning. I'm Jose Cuevas. Thanks for joining us for Mornings on the Hill. I'm Billy Owens. Here's a look at some of the stories we'll be talking about in our second half hour. We have reaction from the new Student Association president and from acceptance students touring campus last week. Plus what the future of Theta Tau holds. Plus, we see how Syracuse and Central New York came together to celebrate Earth Day. All that plus a look at Syracuse football's best prospect going into the week's NFL Draft and a preview of weather for Mayfest on Friday, coming up on this edition of Mornings on the Hill. Our top story this half hour, we continue our coverage of the events of surrounding the expulsion of Theta Tau from Syracuse University. We are rejoined by Caitlin Pearson, who is live in front of the Theta Tau house with more student reaction. Caitlin? Good morning, guys. If you were with us at the 10 a.m., you know that the letters of the Theta Tau house that is just behind me here have been taken off of the house. Now, it has come out this week that the National Fraternity actually owns the property here. So despite the frat being expelled from the university itself, the university can do nothing about the property. Now, despite everything that has gone on this week and, the, and as the Recognize Us SMU movement grows, students know that SU is the place where they want to see change happen. Never leave campus. I, I love this place with my whole heart. Um, but it, it has, you know, made me aware of some things that need to be improved here on campus. Um, I realize that this place isn't perfect. We arranged a protest today to go stand for what we believe in and for them to even have a discussion tonight, to continue the discussion is, is powerful and it's only the first step of many. And I'm, I'm really proud to see what has been done today and how, how much work has been put, in, put behind this and to know that is not the end. Not everyone is going to think the best of you, but that's no reason why you can't do your best. And I feel like that's an even better reason to try as hard as you can to take every opportunity to try something new and do the best you possibly can while you're here. Now lots of emotions and activism all across campus this week from the initial protests at the Chancellor's House just to my right here to the town hall meeting that will take place again at 7 p.m. tonight at Hendricks Chapel. Now students have had a lot to say throughout the week, but the one thing that has been consistent is that students want to see concrete actions taken by the university here to make change happen. I'm Caitlin Pearson for Mornings on the Hill, live from Theta Tau. More coverage of Theta Tau's expulsion coming up, but now, time for another check on your weather for today. Our Odea Pincus is live on University Ave to show us what to expect. Odea? 
Thanks, Jose and Billy. I hope you guys brought something warm to wear because it is a little chilly after the nice two days that we had recently. I know that I'm right now in a sweatshirt and a raincoat and I'm a little bit cold right now. It's not raining now, but let's take a look at your five day forecast to see what we've got coming up this week. Uh, today we've got a 20%. We've got a 90% chance of rain today. Uh, your highs are going to be in the 40s. So for the rest of the couple days coming up, we've got some uh, high chance of rain, 70% ch chance of rain tomorrow uh, as well. Temperatures again in the high 40s. Friday is Mayfest, so you're going to want to get uh, a rain boots, jeans, something like that because it might be muddy. There's still a 60% chance of rain for Mayfest. Going to be a little bit chilly. Hopefully during the weekend, it's going to pick up. Saturday still rain, but Sunday, as Annie said, the sun will come out tomorrow, and we are hoping we're going to have nice weather for that day and that'll pick up until graduation. So everyone just stay warm until it gets uh, until it gets nicer out again. Back to you guys in the studio. More now on the Theta Tau story. On Sunday night, the university sponsored an open forum for students to question administrators about the investigation of the videos as well as reaction. Among the speakers at the discussion was Chancellor Ken Sivrut. However, media with cameras were not allowed inside the event. Attendees asked questions and had comments about how SU is handling the investigation. Students weren't the only ones speaking out. Professor Biko Gray is a professor of religion. Gray. The, the administration on one side looks like it's operating in good faith. And then, and then there are other dimensions of the administra administration, particularly the higher up the chain you go, that don't feel as if they're operating in good faith. <laughs> Gray also says he's continually inspired by students speaking up and standing strong. Severud was also present at a student forum Monday night at the Maxwell School. Incoming SA President and Vice President Grufra Saleh and Kyle Rosenblum shared their reactions following the Theta Tau scandal. Gufran and Rosenblum both say they were shocked by the videos and that this is time to take a change. I think one of the most important things that we'll take from this is that action needs to be done and that there are things that, that we may see as small but will have an effect later on. The pair went on to say that listening to the student body will be the most important thing they do once they take office in order to get a feel of the student body. They want to make SU a place where everyone can feel safe. As we saw in Caitlin's report, the Theta Tau Greek letters have been removed from the house on Harrison Street. According to Onondaga County records, the house is owned by the National Theta Tau Organization. The future of the property is unclear at this point, but it does raise the point that multicultural Greek organizations are not represented on Greek Row. Some students we talked to see the Theta Tau location as an opportunity. Either an MPAC org or just some other multi-Greek org, just because of the simple fact that if you look at like black orgs on, on camp, on Syracuse's campus especially, there's no real representation for houses. Something positive to, in light of the situation. And into the Women's Advocacy Health Center that was taken down like four years ago. The uni university notes it has no control on what happens to the house. We've been talking a lot about the Theta Tau incident and the reaction of people here on campus. But how will it impact Syracuse students who will arrive on campus for the first time this fall? Our Allison Caliguire joins us live now with more. Protesters gathered in the Student Center on Friday morning at 8 a.m. as high school seniors were arriving to check in for Accepted Students Day. The Chancellor and DPS Chief spoke to the Recognize Us movement before the protests continued across campus. That was the Recognize Us movement's message to potential future Syracuse students on Friday during Accepted Students Day. Protesters with signs handing out pamphlets were gathered outside of the dome where Accepted students were having lunch. Organizers of the movement say they weren't trying to scare anyone away with their protests. And we want to give you a fair warning. 
because now that you know, the administration must act and they must create a space that's safe for you because they have 11 days to commit to that. And on May 1st, you can pick a different school if they don't commit. Sophia Flores is a high school senior from Massachusetts. She says she liked seeing the Recognize Us movement protesting. It's good that people are taking action and like speaking for what they believe in. Another potential SU student also says the protests were a good thing for accepted students to see. Yeah, I like the students getting out here and it helps my parents see that there's more diversity than what we see on TV. Flores says seeing the Recognize Us movement on campus on Friday didn't make her second guess coming to Syracuse in the fall. Kind of solidifies like how I feel about Syracuse, which is good. I spoke with one of the organizers of the Recognize Us movement. He says they're encouraged by Chancellor Sifford's actions so far, but this is just the start. Reporting live in the studio for Mornings on the Hill, I'm Allison Caliguire. Coming here on Mornings on the Hill, we'll take a look at how students have been reacting to the Theta Tau videos on social media. See how one student group teamed up with the local community to celebrate environment and advocate for change. The hashtag Theta Tau is trending here on campus and nationally. Our Mai Owens is live to show us how social media users have been reacting. That's right, students, faculty, and even celebrities have been taking to Twitter to say how they feel about the Theta Tau video. For our first tweet, why is it when a group of young men get together and drink, their collective IQ drops 50%? Hashtag Theta Tau, just plain disgusting behavior. Well, let me tell you, that's been the mood on campus for some time now. A student tweeted, another thing for those who like me who are hashtag angry at the Theta Tau video, sometimes I confuse justice with vengeance. This was tweeted after the meeting in Hendricks Chapel where several students came together to pray for the individuals seen in the video. Instead of hate, they wanted to spread a message of hope. Another student tweeted after one of the meetings administration held, um, I left that meeting quite perturbed. Their antidotes struck so close to home, haven't we all at one time or another felt excluded, disregarded, and unimportant? As part of the Syracuse community, that second Theta Tau video blew me away. Another person tweeted to kids of Theta Tau, I offer you this advice. When you become a parent, the health, the abilities, and the future of Syracuse University are important. And lastly, even Ricky Smiley tweeted, Theta Tau fraternity has been suspended from Syracuse University after this racist footage was released. Now, people have been taking to Twitter using the hashtag, hashtagging Syracuse University, hashtagging Theta Tau. It's all been over social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's been an ongoing issue like we've seen throughout our newscasts. Well, that's all for Mornings on the Hill social media. Keep watching to see what's going on by following Mornings on the Hill and keep up with what's going on with Theta Tau by following hashtag Theta Tau. To all women, you should ask a lot of questions and you should not think that there's a barrier of entry to any profession. This past week, three professional women in media and business came to talk to SU to talk about their experiences in those industries. Celia Ryan is a senior at SU who organized the Women's Empowerment Event. She says she hopes both men and women find inspiration and direction for their careers. From the advice of the panel. Susie Ahrens was one of the speakers. She says she stresses the importance of women using their voice in these male-dominated industries. If you wait for somebody to ask you for your opinion or ask you to join a conversation, you are going to be left at the table. Celia Ryan says she hopes the conversation about more women having careers in these fields will continue. The Sun finally visited Central New York this past weekend. While some were content to relax on the grass, others chose to dive from the clear sky of Central New York. Just down the throughway, you will find a different kind of thrill. People suit up to hit the skies and get a rush that only jumping from thousands of feet can get you. An SU professor took the big leap and says the experience is like nothing else he's ever encountered. My office, I don't have it, uh, my, you know, my PhD degree frame, but uh, I think I'm going to frame this one on the wall. You know, it requires way more courage than going to school. Appreciation for the ground. He says he would definitely do it again. 
If you're interested in skydiving, Skydive CNY is open throughout the summer and will even take photos and videos you during your skydiving experience. Members of the Syracuse and Central New York community gathered at Thorndon Park this Sunday to celebrate Earth Day with an event focused around sustainability. Our Sarah Bonadies is live in studio to tell us how the community is coming together to go green. Thanks, Billy and Jose. EarthFest is one of the largest annual events hosted by Students for Sustainability. The organization teamed up with local musicians, vendors, and advocacy groups to bring together the community to celebrate the Earth and advocate for change. To act. There's too much to say. A call to action for those who came together at Thorndon Park Sunday to celebrate Earth Day and raise awareness to the issues currently plaguing our environment. Using this event to interact with people who probably aren't really familiar or very familiar with a sustainable lifestyle and just living green and appreciating the earth. The event brought together environmentalists. Yeah, it was great to come out. I like to support environmental causes. They're important to me, so celebrating Earth Day at Earth Fest was nice. With those who came to enjoy the nice weather. It's a beautiful day. It was actually walking distance of for our apartment, so we figured why not check it out and you know, just enjoying the weather and good people. A festival featured live music, local vendors, food trucks, and tons of activities all focused on promoting the sustainable lifestyle. But Christo Dulakis says the event is a great way for the local community to get involved. It's just a time to come together. So if we're all coming together, making a change, minimizing our you know, uh, environmental footprint, then I think it's more important than ever to start now. A message of immediacy that could be heard throughout this Earth Day celebration. In addition to focusing on sustainability, this year's Earth Fest shined a light on several environmental issues, including global warming and hydraulic fracking. But the real takeaway for those who attended was the community coming together to celebrate the world that we live in. For Mornings on the Hill, I'm Sarah Bonides. Good morning, I'm Alana Selden with your Orange Sports Update here on Mornings on the Hill. The 2018 NFL Draft is upon us and more than 250 new players will join the league this weekend. And while the, dra the draft is taking place in Arlington, Orange Nation is feeling it close to home. Senior linebacker Zaire Franklin along with Steve Ishmael have been reported as the two most likely Orange names to be called this weekend. Our Anthony Haney has a story on how Franklin has been preparing for his shot. Zaire Franklin with a sack and an interception, stepping it up, the Philly guy planting his flag here at MetLife. When people mention Zaire Franklin, they call him a three-time captain, the former leader of the Syracuse defense, and now a 2018 NFL prospect. With the draft coming up, Franklin trained in Seattle and focused on reshaping his body by intensifying his workout and changing his diet. When I went out to Seattle, uh, that was a big part of Trace's program was just um, your nutrition and making sure you treat your body like a temple and knowing what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. His trainer, Tracy Ford, had him on a strict diet. It was a diet filled with lots of protein and little fat. I knew the day that I changed that would catapult my game. With the change to his diet, the six foot one linebacker set his eyes on making a statement at his pro day after failing to get a combine invite. I was most disappointed about not making the combine than I was in any of the All-Star games, but you know I just kind of took it as an advantage for me to get an extra week of training. Zaire was a standout at his pro day compared to some of the linebackers that were invited to the combine. Pro day was just another day. Like we have been, I've been having those numbers for like three weeks, about three weeks now, and it was just like. I done did it so many times, it was just like doing it again. Since his pro day, Franklin has participated in private workouts with the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Philadelphia Eagles, and has been contacted by several other teams. That was Anthony Haney reporting for Mornings on the Hill. The NFL prospect is projected to go in the sixth or seventh round. The Mornings on the Hill team wishes Zaire the best of luck in this weekend's draft. 
Switching gears a bit, the Orange continue to break records on the softball field. In their big 8-1 win over Binghamton Tuesday, Sammy Fernandez became the program's all-time leader in multi-hit games, tallying 65. And Alexa Romero, whose name we hear often, received three different Player of the Week accolades for her performance last week, including ACC Pitcher of the Week and the College Sports Madness ACC Player of the Week. Up next, the Orange hosts Colgate this afternoon at 3 p.m. And that's all for your Orange Sports Update. I'm Alana Selden. Still to come to close out the show for the semester, a story about a set of twins off on a new set of adventures, plus a pop-up shop near Syracuse's campus by local advertising students. Stick around. Welcome back. It's a case of double orange, twin SU seniors. Our Sarah Perks joins us now to tell us how very close siblings are going to have to prepare for a different life after graduation. That's right. It's hard enough when two best friends must prepare to say goodbye once they graduate college. However, it may just be a little bit harder when you've had an inseparable bond of 21 years. Jessica and Rachel Fricker are two twin sisters who have been attached by the hip their entire lives. However, after attending Syracuse University, the two will be living across the country after graduation, leading completely independent lives. SU student Jessica Fricker describes the relationship that they have between each other. She's always been my best friend. So I know some people that are twins or even, even siblings and they don't get along and I never really understood that. Their roommate Nina Pettinella says how she sees their relationship. Their relationship like that is, I've never seen something like it. However, despite being twins, Nina says that they are very unalike. Very different people, and when you tell people that, they're super surprised because when you just see them from like the outside surface, like their looks and like how they dress and stuff, they seem super similar, but personality-wise, they're very, very different. Now, although the sisters have been living side by side for the last four years, a lot has changed since they first came in as freshmen. If one person didn't want to do something and the other person did, we would have to decide. Like it would either be two of us doing something or two of us not doing something. Nina thinks a lot will change as soon as the sisters graduate. I think it's already definitely kind of impacting the both of them. Rachel more so just because she's a little more reliant on her sister, whereas Jessica is more of the type to like go and do her own thing. Although Jessica will miss having her partner in crime, Rachel says she'll miss her jokes mom most because everybody always says I laugh most at her jokes. And even when they're not funny, I still laugh. So I don't know what it is. I think she's funny. Rachel has accepted a job in Dobbs Ferry, New York as a chemical engineer. And Jessica is currently interviewing for jobs in Los Angeles with hopes of entering the entertainment industry. For Mornings on the Hill, I'm Sarah Perks. Wavy, a special branding experience created for students is officially up and running. Today marks their first event, which is a one-day pop-up shop featuring Rent the Runway. Yesterday, creator of WAVE, Julia Haber, a senior advertising major, hosted a special sneak peek of what Syracuse students can expect from the event. I created this WAVE pop-up shop because I wanted to create an experience where college students could have fun times with brands and be in their backyards and embrace their cultures and allow students to really interact with them and grow affinity. The event allows you to try on apparel from the online fashion outlet, take pictures with your friends in the clothing and a photo booth, and enjoy some treats from local dono shop Glazed, glazed and Confused. Wave the pop-up shop will run from 10 to 6.30 today in Marshall Square Mall. And we have breaking news this morning. Five Theta Tau brothers are suing Syracuse University, according to Syracuse.com. The brothers filed an anonymous lawsuit accusing the university of branding them as racist, anti-Semitic, sexist, and hostile towards persons with disabilities. Syracuse.com did reach out to the university for a response and in statement the Syracuse University said that stands by the actions it took to protect the well-being of the campus community and maintain a respectful and safe learning environment. Buses 
will leave from College Place and Goldstein Student Center at 10.30 p.m. You have, been, you have been waiting Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And Friday, the wait will be over with SZA, Gucci Mane, and Mad Medicine performing at the Carrier Dome. Doors open 6.30 following the block party in Walnut Park starting at 1 p.m. Also happening on Friday, the student veteran group photo. If you are a student veteran, military affiliated faculty and staff members are invited to gather on the steps of Hendricks Chapel at 1.30. This is a tradition dating back to World War II. Holly 2018 will be held this Saturday. The SU South Asian Students Association is continuing the fun over the weekend with this colorful celebration. The event consists of crowds of people throwing colorful powder on each other. And the Hindu festival marks the arrival of spring. The event will kick off at 1 p.m. at the Women's Building. Wow, this weekend on the Hill is sure to be a fun one. I'm Jose Cuevas. And I'm Billy Owens.